Thermite EMS. This is the standard edition that we're looking at. Um, there's two levels. There's Express Edition, which has uh, a lot fewer features, and then this is the standard edition with all of the features. So uh, we've just logged in. This is an account with three thermostats in a vacation property in Florida, as you can see in the top left corner there. And we're going to start off with the dashboard. The dashboard is the most commonly used feature uh, on a daily basis. So the dashboard is going to show you basically all of your thermostats and systems at a glance. You can see here there's the three thermostats. When I uh, mouse over them, they highlight in yellow so I can see all the details more clearly. Um, the first, well, the first column here is the um, edit functionality. So you, you click this checkbox to enable the controls on the right hand side here and the relay controls. Um, the next column is the name. There's the information icon which shows you some details about the thermostat. This icon here will show you the weather. This green icon that looks like a play button will open the thermostat console. We'll take a look at that in a little bit later. Um, this column here, last seen, tells you the last time that our software uh, communicated with the, ther with the thermostat uh, date and time, so you can see it's all current. Um, the zone temperature uh, for that thermostat. And then the next column is the temperature at the thermostat and also the humidity at the thermostat. So you can see it's 78.9 degrees and 49% humidity for this thermostat. Then if you have remote sensors, uh, different models have different remote sensor uh, you know, capabilities, but these thermostat models can support up to three. Um, and, and you may or may not have remote sensors deployed, so the, you know, these columns starting here are optional, but you have remote sensor one, two, and three. You can see that for all three of these, they've used remote sensor three as a contact closure. And then over here on this thermostat, remote sensor one, is a temperature probe, and it happens to, based on the label here. It, it happens to be the uh, pool or spa uh, water temperature. Uh, then after the remote sensors, we have the outside conditions. So this just gives you an idea of what the conditions are outside. We ha we see here in this column, HVAC state, that all three of them are running uh, cooling first stage. Uh, I'm not sure if these are uh, dual stage systems, but if they were and it was cooling both stages, it would indicate as such. So you'd see a slightly darker blue and it would say first and sec second stage cooling. We see that the fans are running, which you know, you'd expect when it's cooling. And then we have uh, two relays. And um, in this case, on this thermostat, relay one controls the, the, the pool and spa heater. So if you click here, that would turn it on. Right now it's off, indicated by that icon. And they have um, five other relays which you know which don't look like they're in use they're just they don't have a, a real label so let's let's show you how to make a quick change let's say you wanted to change the cool setback temperature on the lower floor right now it's set to 78 which we can see here let's say you wanted to make it 75 we would select 75 and we would click update we're not going to do that but that's how you would do it or if you want to change the heat or the HVAC mode from you know auto to cool or, or what have you. That's, this is where you'd make some quick changes. Um, and and uh, if you wanted to change them all, you could click here for master control. So let's say you wanted to set all of them to uh, 75, uh, 75. You'd go here, you'd set 75 on this row here, the master control, and you'd hit set all. And that as soon as you hit set all, all three of them would then be set to 75. Um, you'll notice upper floor has this red uh, exclamation mark icon. That means, if, if we mouse over it, that means alerts are pending. So we'll look at alerts uh, in a little bit and talk about those. Um, the other key feature of this page is the, uh, the green button, which I mentioned earlier. When you click the green button, um, it's going to launch the thermostat console. This is the actual web server, web console you're familiar with from UEM. This is actually built in to the thermostat. Um, so each thermostat has this console. So you're very likely, you know, very familiar with this uh, console. This is where you set up your schedule. This is where you uh, set up the thermostat settings and so forth. So here we go. So here's this thermostat schedule. This is, this is still where you'll make these uh, settings and changes. 
So that's the dashboard. Below the dashboard is a bunch of settings. So let's say you didn't have any remote sensors. You could just turn off all those columns and save space on the screen. Or let's say you didn't have any uh, relays set up. You could turn those columns off as well too. We're not going to save those changes, but this is where you would, um, you know, this is where you would uh, do those. So let's go back to the main menu. And I mentioned alerts. So let's take a look and see what alerts are, uh, are, are, are pending. And we can also see here on the main menu that an alert is pending. Um, so we're going to click into here. And we're going to see that uh, this is sort of a running list of alerts that have been triggered on the account. We have um, the most recent one, which is, is the one that we're, the system is letting us know about, has not been acknowledged. You can see that there's no time date and time next to the acknowledge. Um, just the link to acknowledge it. And so you can see that uh, today at 4.35 p.m., a long runtime was detected on upper floor. So let's take a look at that uh, condition. But before we get into that, let's uh, look at alert destinations. So before you do anything with alerts, you need to set up destinations. You can do des receive alerts at your email address, um, at your phone via text message, or at any phone uh, via voice. So what you'll do is you'll put in your email address or phone numbers in here, hit add. We'll send a quick confirmation code to each one of those. You'll come back, you'll type it in this little box here, click confirm, and once you've done that, that email address or phone number destination is ready for you to use, and it'll show up in this list. So once, a desti once your destinations are set up, which are email addresses or phone numbers, then you'll come into here. This user, let's do a quick sort by thermostat, they've uh, basically set up three alerts on all their thermostats, the same three. They've set up thermostat missing, inefficient run, and long run time. So thermostat missing is very straightforward. You, you know, you would select the thermostat, you'd say thermostat missing, and basically s select a threshold. So basically if, if the thermostat goes off the network for whatever reason, let me know within X number of minutes. So it's a threshold that you'll pick here. And if you have more than one destination, you would pick it here and you hit, and you'd hit add. So that's the thermostat missing, very straightforward. The inefficient run, let's look at that one next. So the inefficient run says if the air conditioning comes on or if the heat comes on and we don't detect a change in temperature within X number of minutes, in this case, you know, whatever threshold makes sense for your system, and you might have to experiment a little bit to get the right threshold, um, let me know. So in this case, you know, if the air conditioning comes on and we don't see the temperature start to drop within 45 minutes, send the alert out to you know, this, this destination. The third one that we'll cover uh, on this session here is inefficient run, or sorry, long, long run time. So long run time is kind of similar to inefficient run, but uh, it's a little different. So what long run time is, is um, let's set a threshold here, let's say three hours. So if, if a cooling or heating cycle comes on, and lasts for more than this threshold, in this case three hours, then let me know. And it could be working, it could be working fine, it's just for some reason um, it's a long cycle. Maybe, maybe somebody left the door open, maybe somebody left a window open, maybe a window or a door broke, uh, maybe there's a problem with the fan not circulating air. We don't know what the problem is, but we know that, hey, this is a condition that warrants you looking a little further. Um, if we, you know, this, this alert has already saved this user. Um, he had a five-hour cycle just a few days ago. And, um, you know, it turns out that that's not an uncommon thing for him, but he wants to figure out why he's getting these five-hour cycles. So setting up this alert can sort of, A, let him know when it happens, and B, he can, over time, look and see how often they happen and then start to try to figure out why is this happening. Is there, you know, is it just too hot? Is somebody in the property leaving, you know, windows or doors open? But it gives him an idea of what's going on. So today we covered uh, the dashboard and, uh, and the functionality within the dashboard and the alerts feature. Um, and that, that concludes today's presentation. And we hope you join us next time for, uh, for covering more, uh, more of the functionality. Thanks for